Okay, problem 2.13 reads, find the electric field, a distance S, from an infinitely long wire that carries a line, uniform line charge lambda. And we're going to compare our solution or our result to equation 2.19, which is a result of an example of calculating the same electric field with this configuration, but in that case, or in that example, we used uh, Coulomb's law, okay? So, uh, so let's start by drawing the line. So imagine this is your, sorry. So imagine this is your infinity long wire, okay? Now, uh, so as, as discussed previously, uh, we're going to use the some symmetries that we can, uh, that is uh, appropriate for this kind of system. So here we have a long straight wire. If we're going to use Gauss law, uh, does the shape uh, that is symmetric to this, to this problem would be, a sphere, uh, would be a cylindrical surface. Okay, so in this case, this will be our cylindrical surface. Okay. Okay. So remember that when we uh, when we draw a or when we consider a Gaussian surface, it's very important that we indicate here that this is a closed surface. So for example, this cylindrical Gaussian surface has three sides. This side, which is the uh, lateral side or the side of your cylinder, and then this end of the cylinder. Okay, so this uh, infinite long straight wire carries a, uh, will pro produce an electric field because this is an infinitely long straight wire. So that means the end of the cylindrical wire or of the this wire will not have any contributions to the electric field. So in this case, we expect that the electric field will be radiating outward from the axis. So for example, if uh, in this view, this will be our wire. Okay, so our cylindrical, our Gaussian surface would look something like this. Okay, so because this wire is infinitely long, we expect that the, the, the electric field that is produced will be directed radially outward. Like this. like this, okay? So this will be your electric field. So in our case here, the electric field would look like something like this. Some will be pointing this way. Some will be pointing this way. Some will be pointing that way, okay? Uh, penetrating this point. Okay, uh, can you imagine that? Okay, so here we expect that the electric field will be uh, along the S direction. Okay, so that's why we chose this uh, electric, this Gaussian surface so that uh, the, when we take the dot product of this electric field to the area vector, okay, we remember this has three area vectors. One is directed here, directed from the side. So this is N1. Another one will be in this direction, 
let's call this N2. And another one is directed in this direction. Let's call this N3. So when using Gauss law, this closed integer of E dot DA is essentially uh, uh, broken into three parts. So the first part would be the dot product between the electric field and the area vector along this direction, uh, 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 on this side, plus the electric field, uh, the dot product of the electric field with this side. In this case, this would be our DA2. This will be DA1. And then this direction would be DA3. So this is your third side. This is your second side. Now, by choosing this Gaussian surface, we can see that the direction of the electric field, which is along the S direction, okay, the dot product of that with A2 and A3 is zero. So this becomes zero. As you will notice that this becomes, this closed integral becomes the integral of this. Okay. Now, because of the civic, uh, because of the, because N1 hat is along the direction of S hats, that means that that product of E and DA1 would be reduced to a simple multiplication. So this becomes integral of E DA. And because this is a uniform electric field, because you have a uniform line charge, okay, we can take out that electric field outside of this integral, and this becomes E times the integral of the A. And when you integrate the area, let's call this area one, along this side, this becomes the total area. And what is this total area? This is total area of the side of your cylinder, which is equal to the circumference of the circle times this length of the circle. If we're going to let this length to be L, okay, so this becomes two, and then, uh, this one, would be S. So this becomes 2 pi S times L. Okay. So this equation, this, uh, this integral is now reduced to a simple multiplication of E times 2 pi S times L. And this is equal to the enclosed charge, the charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface divided by epsilon naught. What, what is Q enclosed? Q enclosed is the enclosed charge from this point up to this point because this line has a uniform charge density lambda. Remember lambda if this is uniform, it's just equal to the total charge divided by the total length. So in this case, lambda will now be equal to the Q enclosed times this length, which we already said to be L. So therefore, Q enclosed will now be equal to lambda L. Substituting this here, we now have lambda L divided by epsilon naught. So therefore, the electric field will now be equal to, you will notice here that lambda and L will cancel. Okay. Right. So this will now be equal to uh, Q 
uh, lambda, sorry. This will now be equal to lambda divided by 2 pi s times epsilon naught or simply 2 pi epsilon naught times s, which is actually equal to this one because this is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 2 lambda over s. In this case, in equation 2.9, that s will be z. Okay, so this is the resulting electric. This is the magnitude of the electric field. So that means the vector form of this electric field will be lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught s s hats. And you will notice that this electric field is indeed a function of s. Okay, so this is now the result of your of problem 2.13 of Griffith's fourth edition, which is consistent to equation 2.9 as mentioned in your book. 